Okay, thank you. Um, that was very quick, taking your seats. My children don't listen to me in that way. Um, my name's Paul Bennett. I'm cu the current chair of IEA Bioenergy, and uh, my day job is a portfolio leader around bioenergy for a company called Scion, which is a Crown Research Institute in New Zealand. Welcome to this workshop on technology advances in liquid biofuels and re renewable gases. I think we're expecting over 100 people here uh, at the physical meeting and anything from 100 to, to 400 people online. So that goes to demonstrate how important this topic area is, I believe. I think we're, we are really living in an unprecedented, uh, unprecedented times. Um, we have uh, declared a climate crisis. Um, we're seeing a lot of extreme weather events around the world. We're seeing heat waves, heat waves in Europe, forest fires, North America, Europe, um, deadly hurricanes and tornadoes, and also flooding around the world. And I, I read in the newspaper this morning another mass flooding event in Nigeria where 600 people have been killed. So um, we're seeing a lot of extreme weather. And uh, we know that climate change is responsible for a lot of these extreme weather, weather events. We know. Um, CO2 emissions or greenhouse gas emissions are responsible for climate change. And we know that bioenergy has a role to play here, particularly when it's um, offsetting the use of fossil fuels. We're also, um, we've also got concerns around energy security. Obviously, we've got a war raging in Europe. That's putting pressure on energy supplies and uh, hitting energy prices, and uh, not just energy prices in Europe, it's right the way around the world. So um, big issues that are facing the world from an energy perspective. And those issues are things that can be addressed by energy. Um, but at the same time as we think we've got a role to play, we've got a lot of actors out there who are under undermining the role of um, bioenergy and slowing the de deployment of bioenergy. Uh, by making commentary around the sustainability or the non-stainability of, of biofuels and bioenergy, or making comments around whether or not there is enough biomass to, to, to make a significant role. Um, a, a lot of this negative commentary is actually coming from quite limited or biased analyses. And um, I think it's our role to try and counter some of that analyses. And uh, we, 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 we counter that, I think, through um, really um, addressing and putting out good quality, robust data and analyses around the bioenergy sector. Um, and we also have to use a range of different media to do that, or a range of different vehicles. So we, we obviously publish fairly, fairly dense, highly technical, technical reports, but we have to also take those messages and, and, and uh, publish um, single issue press releases um, so that we are reaching beyond the bioenergy bu bubble, beyond the people who actually um, believe in bioenergy and, and we're starting to talk to those folks who are ag agnostic or even negative towards the role of bioenergy. One of the key media that we use to try and get our messages over is workshops such as this. So I'm you know, delighted that finally we've, we've, we've actually been able to get people together. Um, this is our first physical workshop in three years, so it's, it's great, and it's great that we've got so many people coming here. Um, so the workshop is really focused around those hard to abate sectors, so um, aviation, marine, liquid fuels, and process heat. And, um, and the, tar the target is obviously around li liquid biofuels and technology advances in liquid biofuels and renewable gases. So I think we've got a fantastic program um, and, and, and a really great list of speakers ahead of us. I'm really looking forward to today's um, talks and presentations. I'd just like to thank the um, technical program um, who put together this, 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 this workshop, and particularly like to thank Luke Peltmans, our technology co um, coordinator who's, who chaired that group. So thank you, Luke. 
Also, I'd like to um, make a, a big, big thanks to the Austrian Federal Ministry for Climate Change, Environment, Energy, Mobility, Innovation and Technology. That, that, that's a huge portfolio. Uh, good luck with managing all that. Um, but big thanks to the, to, to the ministry and a big thanks to BEST um, Bioenergy and Sustainable Technologies for supporting this workshop and acting as the local host for this workshop. So thank you very much. Um, we'll get on to the presentations now. In, the, in this session, we have two presentations. Both of them um, will be 10 to 15 minutes. I will allow some questions from the floor and some questions from those online. Um, but the first presentation is from Hannes Bauer from the Ministry. Hannes. So, thank you so much, Paul, for the introduction. A welcome from my side on the behalf of the ministry with the longest name in Austria. I also welcome you to Vienna, Vienna on the left, Vienna on the right, wherever you look. We have also a nice weather today. So welcome to you wherever you are in this hybrid event. Um, my name is Hannes Bauer. I'm working in the Division for Energy and Environmental Technology in the section for innovation and technology within this ministry. This is more or less the biggest ministry in Austria after the finance ministry, I suppose. And I also would like to um, give you some, uh, a nice welcome from the minister, Leonore Gewessler. So, uh, Austria is using a lot of bioenergy. Austria is covered by many forests. Almost half of Austria is covered by forests. As you know, we do have the Alps and the figures are increasing of the stock of wood and the area of forest as well. It's increasing by 4% in the last 50 years. But we have to pay attention that this is going on as we know we are facing climate change and other challenges. So we have about 4 million hectares of forest, more than 3 uh, million hectares of yield forest, which is about 3.5 billion of trees. <laughs> and uh, in Austria we do have a lot of use of all kinds of bioenergy. So one third is used by industry, another third by households. Uh, when we talk about fuel, so most of it is used as heat, it's about 80%. And when we talk about fuel, it's about 11%. Of course, most of the bioenergy is based on solid woody biomass. Um, I also would like to have a look about Austrian's contribution to the International, International Energy Agency. So we are participating in the TCP, Technology Collaboration Program of Bioenergy, almost since the beginning. Um, we also do have yearly tenders uh, in our ministerial program, um, we cover about 3 million euro for services in research and technology development in cooperation with industry and in issues also about hydrogen mobility and all the others, including bioenergy. Now we have 88 running projects in this field, cooperating with uh, the International Energy Agency. Um, most of them are in the field of end use and about 35 in the field of renewable energy. Um, we contract about 200 experts now in these areas. So it's very important to interact with the international community. We want to share Austrian technology, Austrian research results, and we are very happy to see the international developments 
That's why the ministry is supporting these and other conferences very strongly. So the know-how transfer in both directions is very, very important. Um, what I also want to mention is that we do have networking events. Um, so all we have annual networking events. Only focus, we have many networking events, <laughs> some on passive house buildings. and But now I'm talking about the International Energy Agency newcomers and project holders. Um, we meet and share each other once a year. The last time it was in September. Um, we share also the updates in English and in German um, in both directions. And I also can invite you to have a look at our website. Uh, I can share the web page name later on to you. Um, Last but not least, I would like to mention our visualization project as we are working together with IEA since decades. It is not easy to oversee what is running by now. So we had a mapping of all those projects and programs. It's about 205 uh, running tasks in four working uh, packages. We, we participate in 21 technology collaboration programs uh, covering 49 countries, which is quite a lot. Um, we have several web interfaces to share the results. And that's the background of our IEA work and IEA participation. I'm very happy that you are here and I wish you an excellent conference, an excellent share in the pauses. And so thank you for coming and joining. A question for me, Hannes. Um, what proportion of bioenergy do you have in your total energy supply at the moment? Of bioenergy? Yeah. It's about 21% is the portion. Um, of course, we still have a non-neglecting amount of fossil energy, which is the effect. And then we have more than the half uh, of the renewable energy, of the final energy use is coming from bioenergy. Thank you. Um, any questions from the room for Hannes? Please put your hand up. No? Do we have, uh, Jim? Please state your name. Jim Spath, US Department of Energy. Uh, yes, I believe you mentioned that the total amount of forestry has actually been going down over the decades. Is that, is that correct? Which is unlike most, a lot of the Nordic countries, Scandinavian countries, the uh, total amount of forestry seems to be going up in cumulative biomass. Is that, did I hear that correctly? That your net amount of forestry is actually decreasing? In Austria? In Austria, yes. No, I heard that incorrectly. Okay. Forestry is increasing in Austria. So we do have about 48% uh, of the area of Austrian area, which is a lot because, uh, because of a lot of Alps and hills and so on. Um, it was 44% in the year of 1960, and now it is 48%. So the stock of wood is increasing, but of course we also face the storms and other insects, which is a high risk. So we cannot be sure that this is going on in future. But by now it is 48% and we are going to the limit to get out the stock of wood. So I think we cannot increase these numbers much more than now. 
also facing that now we have 9 million of inhabitants, which was also increasing in the last years. So I think we are going to a limit and have to have a look that it is not decreasing. Thank you for the question. Do we have any other questions? We've got time for one or two more. Any, any questions online? Okay. Let's um, thank you very much, Hannes. Thank you. Um, thank you. We, we will move on to our next um, presentation. Um, we have uh, Maria Giordiadou uh, from the European Commission um, going to give us a presentation. Uh, we can see you now, Maria. Good morning. Um, Maria is in DG for Research and Innovation, and she's been working there since 2003, um, focusing on renewable fuels, biofuels, and bioenergy. So I'll hand it over to you, Maria. Thank you very much, uh, Paul, for this nice introduction. I would like to thank you for uh, inviting me to the workshop today. I regret I cannot be there in person. Um, I also would like to thank uh, the um, organizers and the Austrian government for holding, hosting this uh, workshop. Uh, as Paul said, I worked for years in uh, the area of uh, renewable fuels, biofuels and bioenergy in the DG research and innovation and uh, actually looking uh, to the uh, long-term research and innovation that can bring technologies like the renewable fuels uh, into um, uh, business or, uh, shortly. So I would like to share the presentation with you. And um, um, I would like to, to talk about um, a little bit uh, of the policy, what is going on these days. I think you can you can see my presentation now. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, in the area of uh, um, the, the overarching policy in the European uh, Union these days, as uh, everybody uh, knows, is the European Green Deal. Actually, this is uh, a way of transforming uh, the EU's economy to a sustainable economy by intervening in all the areas, in the climate, in the energy, in the mobility, in uh, the industries, in the buildings, uh, in um, the ag agriculture, and also looking uh, to the environment, both in terms of air pollution and in terms of ecosystems and biodiversity, while financing this uh, transition uh, in a, a special way not to leave anyone behind. So behind this, uh, we have uh, several policies uh, uh, in the energy and climate uh, and in the mobility. And um, these are implemented by a set of legislative back, uh, uh, proposals that is called Fit for 55. And this touches upon all the areas, the energy, the climate, the transport, and the uh, taxation. Now, in, the, in terms of uh, energy and, uh, and transport, we have specific targets uh, for sustainable biofuels, renewable fuels, and biogases, and renewable fuels of non-biological origin for 2030 and for 2050. Uh, this uh, is uh, included in red uh, two, um, or now red three, red four, and in uh, the uh, uh, new legislative proposal for aviation, the renewable fuel EU uh, aviation. But uh, in all the other areas, we have mainly greenhouse gas uh, emissions uh, savings targets. Uh, this uh, happens also in the red uh, two, in the fuel EU maritime, uh, where biofuels, biogases, renewable fuels are mentioned and recycled carbon fuels are mentioned explicitly in uh, reducing the intensity uh, of uh, the greenhouse gases in the energy supply to the maritime. Uh, while in the other sectors, we have mainly, as I said, greenhouse gas emission savings uh, targets. And in particularly, we have some new provisions like in the uh, uh, emissions uh, trading uh, system. Uh, we uh, have uh, expanded these uh, uh, emissions targets to transport and buildings from the 1st of January 2026. 
And uh, uh, it's important also to understand that in the taxation, there are proposals uh, not to tax uh, left uh, into the member states' uh, discretion, uh, the renewable fuels, the renewable electricity, the advanced biofuels, the bioliquids, the biogas, and the biomass fuels. The new um, the policy that is around for about uh, four or five months is the renewable uh, repower EU plan. In uh, March, we had the communication due to the energy crisis uh, to um, actually uh, um, uh, to control the energy prices, diversify the gas supplies and reduce the dependency on the fossil fuels imports for Europe. And uh, later on, by two months, uh, we put forward a uh, a plan, an implementation plan of the Repower EU that has three pillars. The first pillar is on the energy savings, and on the energy savings, the proposal is to increase the energy efficiency target from 9% in the 55 to 13% now. The pillar two is about the diversification of energy supplies and uh, is about securing LNG and higher pipeline uh, gas deliverables also um, creating an energy platform to trade together for, with volunteering countries, of course, uh, the gas and LNG and hydrogen supplies, and uh, engaging more with uh, other uh, partners uh, for supply. And the third pillar, which is uh, about accelerating the rollout of renewable energy, the first action is to increase the target for the renewable energy uh, in the energy supply from 40 to 45 percent, which means uh, that uh, there should be a massive uh, scaling up and speeding up of renewable energy, power generation, industry buildings and transport. The, inside this, there is the solar strategy to double the PV capacity in 2025 and to have an obligation for a rooftop initiative in each uh, new building uh, uh, in, in the union. Um, yeah, also measures to uh, double the rate of deployment of heat pumps uh, uh, and uh, speed up all the major renewable projects to deliver this uh, renewable energy uh, that it is necessary. There's an action on hydrogen, the hydrogen accelerator for production, infrastructure and storage for 10 million domestic uh, tons uh, domestic production and 10 million tons imports in 2030. Two delegated tax uh, are ongoing for the definition and production of renewable hydrogen, and there is uh, 200 million uh, additional to support the hydrogen valleys and also in the, the IPCAs uh, uh, are uh, completed uh, uh, for the hydrogen. What is also interesting uh, for interesting for this uh, workshop, uh, but in general for the uh, Repower EU, is the biomethane action plan. Uh, because there is the target to double the EU biomethane production to 35 billion cubic meters uh, per year in uh, 2030. And uh, this uh, will be done uh, with uh, an industrial alliance on biomethane with financial incentives to increase production also through common agricultural policy and with research innovation support for innovative technologies. And also the Power, uh, power EU encompasses the carbonizing industry uh, by uh, switching to electrification and renewable hydrogen. There is already 225 billion available in loans for the, under the resilience and recovery funds. <clears throat> and as I said, a lot of research and innovation for material circularity, biomethane, uh, solar flagship, hydrogen valleys, cities missions, and regulatory sandboxes. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Now, for the biomethane action plan, there is already a staff working document available, and there are five big groups of actions. The first is on the production and use of biogas and biomethane and the access into the grid. So there will be established an industrial forum, an industrial partnership, which is on biomethane to promote the sustainable production and use. Uh, next week on the uh, European Biogas uh, Annual Conference, uh, it is going to be announced. The biomethane <coughs> national strategies are going to be looked at all the integration of biomethane actions in the national energy and climate plans of the countries. The scope of broadening uh, the fuel supply obligation in the uh, Renewable Energy Directive is uh, going also to be looked at. 
um, a participatory multi-stakeholder engagement, speeding up of permitting of biomethane plants and cooperation with neighboring and engagement countries are all in focus for the production and access of, of use of biogas and biomethane. Uh, in addition, there are incentives uh, for biogas upgrading into biomethane to reduce the cost for economic operators. There is uh, um, uh, actions about the infrastructure, looking at, at the local and uh, uh, infrastructure, the challenges, uh, the development of uh, networks and the standardization issues, and also a lot uh, for research and innovation on the development of innovative technologies for the production, but also for the upgrade of biogas to biomethane, for removing the barriers uh, uh, for uh, research and integration of biomethane into the gas grid, and also to expand the sustainable biomass potential in order to ensure that there is availability of feedstock to reach uh, the 35 billion uh, cubic meters per year in 2030. And this uh, would include also um, uh, sequential cropping and uh, marginal and contaminated lands. And also there are actions to access uh, the, to finance, uh, uh, like um, grants and loans uh, and the innovation fund and other instruments. Uh, how we contribute with the research and innovation? Actually, we contribute to the, all the actions for the hydrogen, for the industry decarbonization, for the rollout of the solar energy, for the buildings, energy savings, for the international uh, engagement for uh, speeding up the renewable permitting for the biomethane uh, action plan, as I already said. And we do that with the EU funding programs that are either uh, uh, funding technology, starting with Horizon Europe that has uh, 95.5 billion for uh, uh, funding overall, and in cluster five, which is climate, uh, uh, energy and mobility, 15.1 billion, and for the innovation, innovative Europe, we have 13.6 billion available, also with LIFE project program, uh, which uh, finances pilot projects for the mitigation and adaptation for the climate. And as the TRL increases, we have the Innovation Fund uh, that finances a first of a kind uh, projects to upscale to commercial level. Uh, due to the new measures, there will be ex uh, will be 47 billion for 10 years, uh, as uh, this uh, the emissions trading scheme is going to be expanded to buildings and transport. And further, we have transport uh, connecting the uh, Europe facility for transport and infrastructure in energy and mobility, and the investing UEIB, the uh, European Investment Bank that is looking to debt the financing. Of course, national funding is uh, uh, put, in, put, in, put also into these uh, um, projects. With Horizon Europe, we finance, as I said, the, the destination sustainable, secure, and competitive energy supply under Cluster 5. And uh, um, one of the big challenges is to foster the global uh, leadership uh, of Europe in affordable, secure, and sustainable renewable energy technologies. And uh, these are um, uh, technologies that are important because they can sub replace or substitute the carbon from fossil origin in all the sectors, in the heating, in the power, in the transportation, in agriculture, and in industry. And inside, we have the advanced renewable fuels, both of biogenic origin and the synthetic ones, because they can provide the long-term solutions, carbon neutral solutions uh, for hard to decarbonize uh, sectors in transport and en energy intensive uh, industries. And the strategy is uh, to work on long-term technologies, but also to reduce uh, the cost and improve the efficiency of uh, uh, developing technologies, de-risk those that are more mature to push them to the market with market uh, uptake measures, to integrate this uh, better in uh, all energy consuming se uh, sectors and enhance their sustainability of value chains while reinforcing the European scientific basis and European export potential for international cooperation. And here is a, a list of uh, topics that are uh, still available. Some of them uh, on the left hand side are closing next uh, week and some are still open and they will close on uh, January 10th, uh, 2023. So we have actions uh, for integration in agricultural forestry, for uh, putting uh, demonstrating complete uh, value chains, 
for integrating uh, uh, the renewable energy in uh, heating from uh, uh, in heating and uh, also um, in the international level we have the best international practice for scaling up sustainable biofuels uh, actions on algal on artificial photosynthesis and on uh, low emission technologies uh, for combustion and gasification systems and finally other ways of supporting are the eu catalyst partnership and the innovation fund the catalyst partnership is a partnership between the EU and the Breakthrough Energy Coalition. Uh, it has one billion of dollars overall budget, which is uh, equally uh, supported by the two partners, and uh, actually looks to promote uh, upscale the technologies uh, that uh, are um, in uh, four areas, clean hydrogen, direct air capture, sustainable aviation fuels, and the long duration energy storage. And it works like, uh, uh, the Innovinity P, meaning that uh, it's, uh, it's a blend in finance and it is uh, the uh, EIB, the uh, European Investment Bank, that uh, uh, checks for the financial and the due diligence and the EU that checks uh, for the uh, eligibility in, in the criteria. And the Innovation Fund is uh, another important program for scaling up uh, the production and use of renewable energy carbon uh, storage uh, and carbon uh, use, and uh, energy intensive industries and uh, energy storage. And already there are important calls to calls, and the third call is uh, underway. And we have two big projects uh, here. These are on the order of uh, hundreds of million of uh, euros. The Eco Planta, which is on bio-based methanols from municipal waste, a uh, contribution of the use about a hundred million and the BEX Stockholm, which is a uh, bioenergy um, uh, carbon capture at a combined heat and power plant and storage in the North Sea for, to produce negative emissions, which is about 180 uh, e uh, euros a EU contribution. And the third, it, it will be more on um, uh, storage and on, um, and on hydrogen and on manufacturing. So the, this is all. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your um, um, attention. And uh, if you have any questions, I would be glad to answer. Thank you very much, Maria. <laughs> thank you very much, Maria. I, I think we've got time for two very quick questions. First of all, though, we've had a, a, a series of uh, questions coming through online. And for those of you who are online, yes, the slides will all be um, posted online after the event. Uh, so do we have any direct questions for Maria? I don't see anyone putting their hands up. Anything, anything online? Last chance? No. Thank you very much, Maria. It was very clear. <laughs>